Hello? We should wait a couple of minutes and start our short interview with questions and answers which you sent to us via different channels. So we're starting in less than one minute. I've opened the questions you sent to us. Yeah, it's time now. I think that we are ready to go. Hello, dear friends, dear customers, dear recent users. My name is Alex, and I'm one of the co-founders of the app. So I'm here uh, to answer all those questions we collected, you sent to us. Uh, I don't think that we, it will take too much time. But uh, to be honest, it's a more efficient way to answer those questions you have, uh, because uh, we are getting more and more questions regarding the app and things how it's working uh, regarding the private equity and the different general questions uh, with the app. So we have collected more than 20 questions and uh, made some kind of a summary, uh, structuring it in different blocks. The majority of the questions, just give me a second. The majority of the questions were uh, relevant to private equity ideas. I have grouped them and will answer uh, on all those questions step by step. So I think it would be more convenient if I read the question and then answer it. Uh, I, I hope that I could provide all the details and uh, I will be uh, as much uh, effective and as much open as I can. Uh, once more, thank you very much for the participation. I hope that we can uh, proceed with this kind of uh, uh, interviewing and this kind of Q&A session uh, on a regular basis. But let's try. Let's start with the questions. Uh, I hope that you will like it. So the first question is from the blog regarding the private equity companies. As I said, I structure it and uh, I will uh, answer it step by step. And the first question is, uh, I'm quoting, that given I invest 1000 euro, you are still early stage startup, you might close. What would happen to my funds? It's a very great question. So lots of users and lots of customers, clients are very um, um, attentively uh, taking uh, actions regarding those risks they are uh, having with working with each custody, with each participant, market participant. So it's a great question. And uh, the answer is pretty big, uh, but I will try to be as much effective as I could. So uh, basically, reason is uh, not uh, the single uh, legal entity which is participating in uh, the idea, in the uh, distribution of ideas. Uh, to be honest, Raison is just some kind of a reseller which offers uh, the customers to participate in those private equity investment opportunities uh, with very low entry tickets. Uh, but under the hood, there are uh, a couple of other legal entities which uh, are regulated investment businesses. So when you are purchasing the private equity idea, you are basically purchasing the unit of a fund, which is a feeder fund investing in a master fund which holds all the assets on the, its balance. Uh, it doesn't matter whether Raisin will be there on the market or uh, there will be other uh, resellers and distributors. Still, you are participating like a traditional investor 
in a private equity fund with licenses, with audit, and with all the rights of ownership uh, for the underlying asset. And it doesn't matter uh, whether you will hold it via Raisin or whether you will hold it uh, via other apps, still nothing will happen with your assets if Raisin uh, will go bankrupt. I hope it, 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 these uh, circumstances uh, won't uh, mm, go. So still, uh, I hope that Raisin will be a unicorn, will be a great company in the nearest future, but still to uh, provide you all the uh, information regarding the risks of investments via Raisin app, I should once more mention that Raisin is not connected to the uh, assets you are uh, purchasing. So still all the rights and all the ownership are based on the regulated uh, investment, uh, private investment fund, which is called Unicorn Tokenization Corporation. And as a traditional investor, you are holding these assets directly. Uh, what is the reason for, for the next question? What is the reason for the lack of popularity and yet uh, the equated idea that this application is a scam? Yeah, it's also a great question. Of course, uh, it, it, this uh, question arose from uh, the mentality of the majority of uh, the people, especially those people which are working with uh, cryptocurrencies and which participated, for example, in ICO projects. Uh, they faced lots of scams. These scams, uh, they faced lots of fraud. So uh, it's a pretty uh, clear situation when they are looking uh, on any deep and any new project with some kind of suspicious. Uh, to be honest, to be honest, every every new thing uh, which is not understood by the customer, by the private person, or by the counterparty is. Uh, Mm, uh, is valued uh, as a possible scam, as a possible fraud, and it's pretty normal. Still, I should assure you that the reason is working on the all uh, regulatory requirements, uh, which are uh, covered uh, uh, by EU. Uh, uh, so we are uh, registered in Tallinn, we are registered in Estonia, we are having a license which is called Virtual Currency Wallet Services. So Raison is regulated by Financial Intelligence Unit. Raison is also uh, regulated by FinCEN in the US uh, as a money services business. Uh, and it should give you some kind of assurance that Raison is not a scam and uh, provide you some kind of uh, assurance once more uh, that your funds are kept safety, in safety. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, uh, answering the first question, still, uh, although Raisin is a regulated infrastructure, is a, re is a regulated investment business, uh, it, it's a regulated financial institution, uh, the custody of the assets and uh, the ownership of those assets you are purchasing is segregated from the Raisin as a business itself. So uh, basically, you should understand that uh, having in investments into uh, those private equity ideas or even uh, the cryptocurrencies, which are also available uh, in Raisin platform. You are purchasing the ownership in a regulated investment fund, if we are speaking about private equity opportunities, or you are purchasing uh, um, cryptocurrencies, which are held on, in a non-custodial wallets. And if something will happen with Raisin, you will be uh, directly provided the opportunity to have those assets in other wallets uh, or in, in other custody. So the question is pretty big. The question is pretty hard to answer. Uh, and the, all those things we are mentioning on our website or in our correspondence with uh, our customers uh, should assure you that we are providing only legal opportunities, uh, regulated opportunities to invest. And of course, if you still have some questions, you can also contact our support and they will provide you the details of the ownership the details of those things, uh, how it's regulated and how it, everything is secured. Uh, so let's move to the following question. I hope that this question was answered. Uh, you can also write me some comments right here in uh, YouTube. Uh, I hope that it's uh, on the right side of your screen. Uh, if you're on a desktop or uh, if you're on a mobile, you can also ask your ask your questions and comments right here, and we will return to this question if it's still not answered. So let's move forward. How do you make sure that your 
uh, proposed opportunities are profitable? Which criteria and characteristics of the company, its business do you take into account before buying shares in particular private company? I mean, based on what do you decide that this particular company worth investing in? So uh, I think that it's a great question. I think that it's a great question. It's uh, the question which is answering um, the main idea of our business. Basically, we are here to uh, collect all the info and to uh, provide you the opportunities which we are valuing as those opportunity opportunities having good uh, equity upsides and having uh, potential great potential yields without uh, um, big risks inside it. So. Um, to be honest, Raisin is not a single, as I already mentioned, Raisin is not a single uh, legal entity uh, which uh, is it, which is participating uh, in uh, offerings of those private equity companies. Raisin has a traditional investment business branch. Uh, this company is called Raisin Asset Management and uh, is regulated by British Virgin Islands Financial Services Commission. It has a license of a approved investment manager and uh in addition to it or maybe it's a very it, it's the first important thing it's also regulated by united states securities and exchange commission and regulated as a registered investment advisor so uh I, i'm so I'm very sorry um so uh answering the question regarding uh the i the, the um, process of uh, choosing those companies we're using our traditional investment business with uh special staff with uh, qualified employers which are uh, carefully choosing those uh, companies to provide you the opportunity to invest in. Uh, in addition to this, I should mention that Raisin is, uh, is, is, is um, an opportunity which offers those uh, private equity ideas we are already having on a balance of the fund which is called Element Global Technologies Private Portfolio. This is the regulated private investment and venture capital fund. You can uh, find additional info on it uh, by Googling uh, or, for example, going to techcrunch or to crunchbase.com and uh, finding the Raisin Asset Management page. Uh, you can see all the investments we have in this fund. This is a pretty big fund with more than 25 million on its, uh, in assets on its balance. So uh, we are carefully choosing those companies based on our experience. We are using different method methodologies. Uh, so uh, we are using uh, the marketing appro market approach, which assumes that we are calculating the uh, fair market value of the company, and we are calculating uh, the future, pot the potential uh, price of the company it, it could have uh, based on its. Uh, uh, metrics of revenues, uh, of user growing, of user uh, base grow, growing, and so on. We use different uh, models uh, in building uh, those fair market uh, price value and uh, the future price prognosis. So uh, yeah, these methods includes, uh, include include um, uh, the calculation based on, uh, for example. Uh, price to sales ratio, price to earning ratio, if the earnings are there in the companies. We're also uh, always uh, competing and uh, comparing those companies which we are offering with the companies which are already publicly traded. So we are doing a great job to provide you only the best opportunities with uh, the biggest uh, yield uh, opportunities in those uh, investment ideas. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, we can make some kind of mistakes. Uh, no one is insured of making mistakes and in investments, but still we are trying to be as much uh, effective in choosing those companies as we can. Uh, so let's move to another question from the blog uh, for, of pre-IPO investments. Uh, the question says, how often do you plan to add new companies for pre-IPO investments? Also, the great question. Uh, we would like to make as uh, much opportunities for you as we can. 
uh, unfortunately, we are limited uh, with uh, the customers base we are currently having. Uh, of, course, of course, we are also limited with uh, those uh, available opportunities uh, with uh, um, uh, good potential of yield. And we're limited with our resources in researching those companies to provide you to invest in. Uh, we have a plan. We have a plan to provide you a marketplace with not less than 100 companies uh, available to be purchased. Uh, I'm not sure that this plan will be executed until the end of this year. I'm very sure that it won't. But still, we are trying to do our best to provide you as much opportunities uh, as uh, uh, you are looking for. Mm, but still, we should understand that resources are unlimited and we don't want to put the companies just uh, uh, to be there on the marketplace. We do want to uh, provide those ideas uh, which uh, are only um, uh, good evaluated and well, well evaluated, sorry, and uh, we are uh, researching deeply to provide you uh, those ideas, those ideas, and uh, choose those ideas carefully. That's the reason that we are not putting, I don't know, ten or twelve or twenty companies uh, each month and so on. Uh, but still, in our plans, uh, we would like to have uh, not less than two or three opportunities each month available for you to to be purchased. Uh, what future pre-IPO will be available on Raisin AI next? Uh, it's some kind of, I hope that it could be some kind of surprise for you. Uh, I cannot disclose the names of the companies right now uh, because it it's not very correct uh, to provide the names because uh, the deals could uh, be dropped. Still, uh, I can say that those companies which we are working now uh, on uh, well known in EU, in US, and uh, I think globally, worldwide. Uh, one of the companies is from uh, financial sector. It's uh, a very well known EU fintech uh, bank. And the second company uh, is a company which is working in the se sector of uh, games technologies. And its name is also well known uh, between uh, those people which are following um, the market news connected to Apple. So I hope it could provide you some thoughts to think about the names of those companies. Uh, these two companies are in our shortest pipeline because we have a very uh, long list of the companies which we are uh, looking for, which we are, I don't know, running for, uh, and which would like to provide uh, you to uh, invest in. But still, I don't think it's a good idea just to provide you some names uh, based on our wishes or without any uh, offers uh, and without any uh, negotiations with the sellers. So let's move to the sec to the uh, following question. Uh, why do you need to, to track to why do you need the blockchain to track units? Seems much easier to have a simple database of clients and assigned shares. Well, uh, it's a very complex question. Uh, as I mentioned, we are working right now on a digital ledger technologies license to provide uh, you the opportunity to invest in private equity ideas without being accredited investor. So uh, current regula regulations allows it uh, uh, to allows to secure those uh, underlying assets in the form of uh, virtual tokens, in the form of tokens based on blockchain and uh, to distribute these tokens between non-accredited investors uh, as we are distributing um, uh, the, the funds, the, the units of a regulated fund uh, in, in a substance. Uh, so digit, uh, digital ledger technologies, blockchain technologies are viable for uh, the project uh, to work. Uh, and uh, more of it, more of it, uh, when we created uh, this project, when we created uh, the idea of uh, 
uh, democratizing the, the marketplace, the market of private equity ideas. We are thinking of giving the opportunity to investors not only to purchase uh, those private and private uh, equity pre-IPO ideas with the um, Horizon platform, but uh, we are also uh, thinking and we are also working in the way of offering those investment ideas via different resellers. Uh, as you may know, we are working together with a company which is called an MBSafe. It's uh, a well-known blockchain technology company based in US. Uh, it has its own platform, Orderbook, which is a close partner of uh, Raison, MBSafe itself, and Orderbook also. So basically, you could purchase those tokens from a single ledger uh, in Orderbook and in Raison. Yeah, there, there are also a couple of resellers right now connecting to uh, those offerings we are providing to the customers. And digital ledger technologies offer us to distribute uh, those private equity ideas between the customers, uh, not dependent on a platform, not dependent on a reseller, and uh, also stay in, uh, uh, also stay in, in, um, uh, regulative uh, way without uh, uh, without having uh, additional, you know, uh, infrastructure risks because uh, digital ledger technologies allows us, uh, in, in in a simple uh, couple of words, allows us to uh, hold the register of the shareholders of the fund, which is called Unicorn Tokenization Corp, uh, which is purchasing those private equity, uh, private investment ideas on its balance and distributing the units of it. Uh, it allows us to simply hold the blockchain register, the register on a blockchain, and it allows each customer to check whether he is still a, uh, a holder of units in uh, different uh, investment ideas. And also it helps us to, you know, uh, provide some kind of safeguarding to those assets because it's not possible to transfer those assets without the permission of the user. Uh, only the user can sign the transaction. So uh, in this way, uh, it means that using usage of blockchain technologies uh, also gives additional security to uh, safekeeping of the assets. So basically that's the main reasons why we're, we're using blockchain technologies deeply. And in general, um, in my in my opinion and in opinion of my colleagues, uh, we are seeing that uh, all the investment spheres, all the traditional investment uh, businesses, uh, will be slightly step by step moving towards using blockchain technologies in uh, traditional uh, you know, shares, uh, shares purchases, shares exchanges. And uh, we also see the examples that, uh, for example, NASDAQ is uh, trying to develop its market called NASDAQ OMX in Baltics, uh, which is deeply using the uh, investment uh, opportunities, uh, which is deeply using the blockchain in, uh, in the blockchain technologies to provide the customers investment opportunities in traditional uh, stock markets and traditional pub in trade in trading with traditional public companies. I'm seeing the questions. I will answer all those questions uh, when I will answer those questions which I'm which I'm answering now, which I had uh, in a pre preliminary way uh, from our customers. So please provide me uh, all those questions here, and I will uh, answer it uh, for sure. So let's move forward. Uh, which, what what happens with the digital stops, stocks on the Raisin app when the, a company decides to go public? Well. Uh, basically, it doesn't matter whether it's on a Raisin app or uh, purchased via another purchaser. Uh, as I said, you're purchasing the units of a fund which is called Unicorn Tokenization Corp, which is a regulated fund with license and so on. Uh, everything is going uh, like in a traditional private equity uh, business. So when the company is going public, we are uh, receiving this fund, which is called Unicorn Tokenization Corp, uh, directly or indirectly receiving the proceeds from investment in those companies which are currently public. I can provide the example with uh, um, Airbnb shares, for example. It uh, was uh, redeemed to the customers, I think, a couple of weeks ago. So uh, the process is pretty clear and pretty simple. 
uh, when the company is going public, we are receiving those shares to the brokerage account of the fund. In this particular case, we used uh, a master feeder scheme. So we uh, received the funds to a, a master fund uh, in which the unicorn, the unicorn tokenization fund invested. So uh, all the underlying assets uh, in the form of Airbnb shares were transferred to a uh, brokerage account of the master fund in the US. Uh, it was a DTC transaction. You can Google it if you want. Uh, I won't stop on it, uh, dis dis describing what it, how it's working. So we received the shares. Uh, according to memorandum, we uh, immediately sold those shares uh, as just after we received it. Then we uh, redeemed the proceeds to the Unicorn Tokenization, to, to Unicorn Tokenization Corp. Uh, to the shares uh, connected with Airbnb, to the share class connected with Airbnb shares. Uh, those units are called UAIRs. So, and uh, after the funds were received by Unicorn Tokenization Corp, uh, all the units were redeemed with the transactions to the customers' wallets in USDC. So the customers uh, have nothing to do with those tokens. The tokens were automatically uh, redeemed uh, with a smart contract. And the customers automatically received all those funds uh, which we had, which they should receive uh, in the form of U a USDC. Of course, the customers were provided the information on the closing prices, on the commissions, and so on. So there was a formal letter, uh, a notice letter sent from Unicorn Tokenization to all the participants, to all the UR holders. And after receiving this, this uh, notice uh, in a couple of days, I think that all the shares were redeemed with uh, pro with proceeds in USDC. And it will work in any other case. Uh, right now, we are redeeming uh, digital ocean shares. We are in the process of uh, transferring the funds to Unicorn Tokenization Corp. And I'm sure that it will be transferred today. So I hope by the end of this week, all the customers who chased uh, digital ocean units will have the proceeds on their accounts. So let's move forward. Uh, how? What? So I'm sorry. Uh, how can we find out the lockup period of an investment? Is there a default fixed period? Well, you know, basically, when you are purchasing uh, an interest in private company before it's going public, uh, there is traditionally uh, 180 days of a lockup uh, according to its regulations. If it's a company from yes. If it's a company from EU, it depends, but still uh, in majority of cases, uh, the hold uh, periods are the same, the lockup periods are the same. So it means that uh, after the company is going public, uh, 100, uh, 180 days should pass before we could receive those shares from uh, the sellers. But still, I should mention that, of course, uh, it, it, it won't work just uh, in the way uh, as 180 days passed and we are immediately uh, having those shares on the brokerage account. Still, we need to have some, you know, uh, uh, handicap to receive the shares from the sellers to coordinate it with the brokerage, with our brokerage and with the set uh, settling brokerage, the brokerage would send those shares. Sometimes we need to get uh, an inked paper, uh, an inked paper, in, in, inked signed uh, formulas from the sellers and so on. So uh, in some cases, uh, the redemption, so the, the settlement of those shares to uh, the brokerage account uh, with the final distribution to the customers of the proceeds could take even more than 180 days. But in some cases, in some cases, it could take uh, less time dependent on the form of uh, going the com on the form of uh, on the way uh, in which the company is going public sometimes the companies the companies are placing in the form of direct listings so the lockups period there uh, sometimes are shorter and it depends on uh, on uh, some kind of internal conditions and of course, we should mention that sometimes the companies go. Sometimes the companies are going uh, to public market via uh, merging with SPACs, special purpose acquisition companies. In these cases, there is usually no uh, lockup periods, and the proceeds could be received faster. But still, to be honest, 
uh, usual lockup period is something near 180 days plus. Uh, moving forward, what are the options of withdrawing? Oh, yeah, I think that the questions regarding the, I uh, know, oh, sorry, pre-IPO questions are not finished. So uh, let's move to the next question. What are the options of withdrawing my money from my Raisin account uh, with the smallest possible fee commission? Bank transfer, card, or crypto? Uh, this question is not connected to private equity, but it's a great uh, general question for the majority of the customers because their main idea is not just to invest and uh, to get those yields from the investment opportunities, but to receive those proceeds, they would like to, uh, I don't know, receive to their bank accounts or spend on different different needs. So uh, it depends on uh, the, the, the most convenient and the most uh, cheapest way is dependent on uh, the location of the customer. So basically, uh, sometimes it's cheaper to withdraw funds in uh, uh, cryptocurrency and exchange it on <coughs> those financial platforms or exchanges you are working with. Uh, for some customers, it's cheaper to uh, withdraw the funds via SIPA transfers in EU, for example. It only costs 0.3% per transaction. I should mention that uh, the depositing function is also for the EU customers is uh, the, the most uh, effect, cost effective way to deposit the funds in EU is also a separate transaction because when you, when you are sending more than uh, 300 of euro, if I'm not mistaken, you are receiving uh, all your funds in full without any fees. Unfortunately, we are hardly connected to uh, the fees which are passed to us to the banking institution we are working with. And of course, we would like to have anything for free, but those financial institutions serving us are taking the fees, so we cannot pay it uh, by ourselves only. Uh, we have no card uh, withdrawals right now. We're working on it. Uh, I should mention that we are already having a technical possibility to withdraw uh, the funds in the United States dollars. Uh, it could go anywhere, practically anywhere in the world, except some countries. Uh, unfortunately, uh, some countries from uh, Eastern Europe and from CRS are there. I think that uh, there are uh, listeners from Russia, and I don't want to disappoint you right now. But still, 99% uh, that it won't work uh, with uh, an option to withdraw and to deposit the funds in USD to Russia also. But we're working with another bank which could allow us to do it. Uh, so you should uh, take uh, care of those options, how to withdraw uh, the funds from Raisin uh, in the most cost effective way by yourself. Uh, we are very transparent in the fees. We are disclosing everything uh, on different stages of the withdrawal process. And also on the website Raisin.app or Raisin.ai in their uh, tab, which is called fees. So you could calculate by yourself, which is the most cost effective way to withdraw the funds. And uh, the next question is uh, relatively connected to, the, to this one. Will there be a better way to deposit and withdraw your funds, the customer's funds, I assume? Maybe creating a Raisin bank card that you can deposit or withdraw with. Yes, we are also uh, looking for, always looking for, uh additional ways of withdrawing the funds to the customers so with the uh the the the, the most uh, fee and cost effective uh price structure uh we were thinking of issuing bank cards to the users uh, but still uh, the customers base is not re very big right now and and it's not a cost effective way for us to provide those services uh it's in a pipeline of the development of uh, raisin so I hope that we could provide step by step these opportunities to the customers from different regions. I think the first region we will offer it is, of course, the European Union, because uh, we are based in the European Union and the majority of the customers are also from EU. But still, we also negotiated with a couple of uh, financial services providers in US and uh, in CIS. 
And uh, there are also offers on our hands to issue uh, the customer the bank cards. It's not a bank card, it's a prepaid uh, card uh, issued by Visa or MasterCard, which could be used to, to deposit and withdraw funds. And even not only to withdraw the funds via ATM machines, but also to use uh, your funds on a raisin balance uh, just to purchase uh, traditional, just to have traditional spendings uh, on a daily basis. So uh, I should assure that we are working on it. It's in, in our pipeline, but we are focused on the main product. Uh, we are focused on private equity ideas because our main idea right now and our main aim is to provide the customers the opportunity to uh, get those, uh, get to, to raise, the, to, not to raise, to uh, have uh, great yields uh, with uh, their funds and to spend those funds uh, via current uh, withdrawal methods. Uh, to their bank accounts or other uh, cryptocurrency providers. And uh, I, I think that if the customers will receive uh, good yields, they will find the way how to withdraw it in a more cost-effective way and uh, find a way how to spend those funds. Uh, the next question is also connected to private equity opportunities. Uh, how often unit price is updated? Well, uh, you know, right now it's uh, updated very rarely because uh, we should um, we can update it only on the public market uh, info uh, with uh, the initial with the next rounds which a company raising or maybe uh, based on some deals we are knowing uh, but still uh, there are no companies which are raising e each month or maybe I don't know each quarter so uh, we're updating uh, as soon as possible as we're having the updated info. Uh, I should mention about one thing. Uh, when we'll launch the secondary market, the price will be updated automatically based on the transactions uh, on the secondary market. So there will be some kind of arbitrage possibility and there will be some kind of you know misconnection between the latest evaluation round and um, uh, the price which is uh, set up on a secondary market uh, in an execution of a deal uh, between the seller and the buyer. So when the secondary market will work and if the liquidity will be pretty pretty nice, so if uh, the turnovers will be pretty nice, so I, I, I assume that uh, the unit price will be updated more often. Uh, and, the sec and the next question is also connected to the secondary market. Uh, in, 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 is option of selling my pre approval stocks to other reason users available already? If not, when it will be? And the following question, when will we be able to sell our unit in the secondary market? So uh, there is one more question uh, on Russian language. Uh, I will translate it. Do you plan to develop uh, the internal secondary market? Uh, I cannot sell the idea. Uh, directly via an app only with the help of a manager. So, you know, basically we don't, uh, we, we do allow the customers to trade between themselves, uh, like in the form of, I don't know, uh, any peer-to-peer -peer, uh, platform uh, offering uh, blockchain uh, transactions. We also launched uh, a, a Uniswap contract on Celo. Uh, which allows the customer to uh, sell and to purchase the shares uh, in, on, in a test regime. Uh, it, the secondary market is in our hands for a pretty long period of time, but unfortunately it was postponed due to transition from Ethereum blockchain to Celo, because uh, usage of Ethereum blockchain was very cost ineffective due to high prices or, and the, due to high fees. Uh, of, uh, of blockchain transactions. Uh, we're working hard on it, so and I hope that we could uh, offer um, those uh, secondary market uh, purchase and sell opportunities until the end of this year, but I can guarantee it, unfortunately. Still, uh, the main idea of private equity investment is purchasing the company until it, it's going public. Uh, but we do know that our customers are feeling uh, sometimes uh, have the needs of liquidity. So that's why we're working on a secondary market. Uh, let's move forward. Uh, I think that we have finished with the questions uh, 
uh, connected to pre-IPO and private, inv private companies' investments. And uh, there will be more general questions uh, in the end. Uh, the following question, the next question is, are you going to be hiring more people or where can we apply for recurrent positions? Any business development part-time roles? So, uh, yes, we are always hiring. We are always looking for uh, talented people. Uh, our main need is uh, the development team because, as you can see, we have lots of ideas, uh, but we lack of resources to move fast with the IT development. Uh, you can always uh, send your resume to send your CV to support at raison.ai uh, with uh, some kind of uh, text uh, asking about uh, the relevant position and so with some kind of a letter uh, with a description letter and it will be forwarded to the relevant department and it will find you uh, as a suitable person to work with Raison. Of course, we would contact you and provide you with uh, hiring opportunities. Uh, let's move forward. Uh, when will we be able to sell USDC to Euro, uh, to Euro, and I think to any other currencies, and any other fiat currency, or to cryptocurrency is also <clears throat> the thing which is interesting. <coughs> I'm sorry, to our customers. <coughs> well, you know. We are working on it. Uh, we are working with a couple of uh, exchanges um, uh, with uh, cryptocurrencies. It is uh, Bitstamp and Kraken. Uh, to be honest, we are currently focused on private equity opportunities, private development of private equity marketplace. So we have in the pipeline also uh, the opportunity to sell and, uh, and to purchase USDC for fiat. And uh, I think uh, that we will provide this opportunity also until the end of this year, I hope at least, uh, because we are working on it. And uh, I should also once more mention that unfortunately we are lack of resources for all those great and interesting ideas we are having. So soon, soon we'll provide uh, a very, uh, very useful and very convenient thing for the customers. They're asking for a long time. And I'm sure that uh, those listeners uh, here uh, also would like to have uh, such solution. It's a face ID or biometrics and verification uh, um, to log in into the application because I know that it's uh, a big problem for the majority of the customers uh, to log in in the app right now. Uh, so this is the the coolest thing we are working right now on. Uh, it's not a simple process because uh, of the technical, um, you know, um, of, of the form we are we have created the the the, the wallets, uh, the non uncustodial wallets. So it's not as easy as uh, implementing on. Uh, traditional uh, cryptocurrency exchanges or as uh, in uh, different financial institutions because we are very keen on security and it's very difficult. Uh, uh, the, the technical infrastructure under the hood is very difficult uh, with uh, securing your private key uh, and so on. Uh, and let's move to the last one questions. Uh, the first one, uh, it's those questions are not relative to the platform itself, uh, I think, and uh, perhaps uh, they won't be interesting to the majority of the listeners. But still, uh, the first question is, when will you become an unicorn? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's a great question. Still, uh, we're aiming to become a unicorn. Uh, but we need time to move uh, towards this valuation. Uh, we're focused on providing the customers great uh, product experience and great opportunities. So I can't answer when we will become a unicorn. Uh, still, we are trying to make a product which is uh, as much convenient and uh, will provide you those options and those uh, you know uh, pain sol 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 solving things um, for example uh, with yields or with uh, volatility on the markets and i'm sure that if everything will go the same way as it's right now 
will become a unicorn in, I think, three or maybe four years from now. And the last question is uh, uh, connected to the Russian language uh, and I think to other languages. Uh, the customer is asking why there is no Russian language in the app. Uh, I think that I could add why there is no any other languages uh, besides English in the app. Uh, so the question is pretty simple. Uh, we are focused uh, on uh, interna in, um, international uh, coverage. So we use uh, the most international uh, known language as English. Uh, of course, we have some plans to develop international versions, uh, so local versions of uh, the applications with translations to local languages. But still, it's uh, in the pipeline and not very important for us right now. I'm always honest, so I, I should say that it's not very important for us right now. Uh, still, if you will open the application in the web browser on your mobile phone, for example, uh, using your Safari browser in iOS, uh, in Apple, uh, or maybe uh, some other browsers, uh, by visiting m.raison.ai and logging in with the same credentials as you are using in the app, you can translate all the things uh, with the usage of um, a browser uh, opportunity, with the browser functionality, because uh, all the mobile browsers are allowing right now to translate uh, the web pages. So, and as we are using the web app technology, you can translate those uh, things simply in a browser. And the last question uh, from the same customer, why can I use uh, the Russian passport, uh, you cannot use not only the Russian passport, you cannot use any passport or any ID document which is uh, having uh, or which is having the fields uh, written on the national language. Uh, we should uh, have uh, the ID which is using, which is uh, filled with uh, English uh, letters. Uh, with English language. So uh, speaking about Russia, you can use, for example, not only international passport, but uh, the driving license. And uh, with other countries, you can use uh, the uh, documents, ID documents, which are translated, which are using the English language uh, as a, some kind of form of translation. So it's all with the questions uh, we had uh, via uh, different channels uh, before these. Uh, Q&A session, and I will move to the questions which I have in YouTube. Uh, hi, Alex, do you plan to create your coins or tokens? Uh, you know, we have some experience with uh, RSN token. This is a form of um, convertible note we're offering to our customers. Uh, it, gives a, it gives the customer the opportunity to, to invest in Raisin uh, via convertible uh, note. Uh, which uh, gives the customer 10% uh, yield until the maturity and which could be converted into equity of the company. So if you are interested, you could proceed to the uh, application and you can check the details on the marketplace by clicking uh, the icon uh, with uh, the Raisin logo. Uh, where do I look for people reselling, uh, trading the SpaceX token? Uh, I'm not sure that it's it could be easy to find a person uh, who is selling uh, trading the SpaceX stock in some kind of a public uh, in some kind of a public resources. But still, you can join our uh, Telegram channel, uh, which is uh, uh, called Unique. Um, I don't remember the name of it. Uh, Karina, could you please send the link in tele right here to Telegram channel uh, pre IPO tokenized shares? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, if you could if you could join this Telegram channel, you can also uh, ask the questions uh, uh, and look for the sellers and uh, negotiate uh, negotiate with uh, those sellers to transact uh, on a private basis uh, via OTC transaction. Uh, yes, we are taking the questions from here. Can you describe your biography company's work experience, please? Sure. Uh, I think the most convenient way for you to research uh, the biography of all teams, uh, of all team members, is to follow our website uh, and to follow the web page, which is called about the company. You will find all the team members there with the links to their LinkedIn profiles. 
disclo disclosing their previous experience. For me, personally, uh, I'm working uh, in investments for a pretty long time period. I have started to trade uh, personally in 2006. Uh, I had uh, held uh, the positions in uh, big brokerage companies uh, uh, in CIS and in the EU. And uh, I'm also the director and the co-founder of Raison Asset Management, the US Sector Regulated Investment Advisory Company, which is having business starting from 2015. We have more than, I think, right now, 70 uh, million USD under management. And uh, Raison was created due to the needs of, due to the requests of the customers um, uh, from this business and uh, due to the wish to democratize as we are see, democratize the private equity market as we are seeing the transition of, uh, in, in, in this sphere of business. Uh, with the other founders, I think that it's, it would be more convenient for you to follow the website uh, and to find the info disclosing their uh, bio and their experience. Yes, this is the link to the Telegram channel where you, you can uh, find all the relative info and uh, ask all your questions uh, with practically immediately immediate response. Uh, when will be able to sell or you need to secondary market? I've answered this question where I can read the year report of GDPP. Uh, you know, as we are uh, a U.S. SEC regulated investment business, uh, we're disclosing a EDV forms to United States Securities and SEC Commission, Securities and Exchange Commission. So basically, you can visit the website, which is called raison.am, and then follow to uh, the U.S. SEC website uh, and uh, opening the EDV form, and it disclose all the uh, all the info regarding the investment advisor business and the funds which we are managing right now. Still, I should mention that these reports are uh, filed on a yearly basis. So the latest report is relevant uh, for 2020. Uh, the report for 2021 will be available until, until March of 2022. Uh, and the numbers uh, have grown significantly there. Uh, we do also have an audit, which will be finished until the end of this year. And I think that we will publicly uh, provide uh, this audit or maybe some parts of it. Now, of course, this audit will be provided to the direct customers of Global Technologies Private Portfolio, to the direct investors. And it will be um, provided to Unicorn Tokenization as a customer also. So I hope that uh, we'll find the solution to disclose as much info as we can. We do also, uh, as you could understand, uh, extra transparent. So uh, if anything is needed, please uh, join our Telegram channel and uh, ask uh, what do you need to, to see and to check, and we'll provide you the details. Where do you invest your personal assets, pre-IPO or any other assets? You know, uh, as, as a part of, an, uh, as an employee in investment business, uh, as an employer, uh, as a specialist uh, with uh, different certificates. I do uh, invest my funds based on uh, a correct way of uh, diversification. Uh, some funds are also, are also invested in pre-IPO, uh, but not the whole net worth. Uh, I'm investing in, I have a pretty um, uh, risk uh, tolerance strategies. So uh, I invest in different risks in risk uh, opportunities, uh, risk instruments, uh, such as cryptocurrencies. I invest in traditional markets uh, in stocks. Uh, I do work with futures and forwards or oh, not forwards options. Sorry. Of course, some some part of my net worth, I invested in uh, uh, non high yield uh, instruments uh, with uh, some kind of guaranteed investment yield in, with, with guaranteed investment yields uh, like bonds or simple bank deposits. So that's it. Uh, will there be, on? yes, uh, it will be published. And what's the main threats to raise on right now? Uh, what's the main threats? Well, you know, the main threats uh, are 
not uh, the threats which are uh, directed to raison, I think, directly, but uh, the, trends to, the, the, the threats to markets. So, uh, of course, if uh, all the markets are going down and uh, we'll have, you know, uh, the bearers, um, more, more um, bearer uh, targeted uh, investors on the market, it would be very difficult to uh, sell and to offer those investment opportunities and the companies uh, which we're offering right now could postpone the uh, liquidation events like uh, going public, uh, becoming a public company or raising next rounds. So in general, I can see some, you know, uh, direct uh, risks uh, to raise on, but and direct threats to raise on. But still, as a any financial product, as an any uh, uh, fintech company, we are facing the same uh, general risks, general market risks, uh, geopolitical risks, and so on. So basically, that's it. I think. Uh, just let me check. I think that there there are no more questions and all the questions are answered. Uh, it was a great pleasure uh, to meet with you virtually. I hope that we will proceed with some kind of uh, Q&A sessions uh, uh, in the nearest future. It was an experience, experience for us, the first experience uh, and experiment. Uh, let's try to move forward uh, with the, the same uh, Q&A sessions uh, in the nearest future. And I wish you all best. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.